Hi, grades three. Today is Thursday, and today we are looking at page 148 of review nine, okay, of your workbooks. So we are looking at page 148. Now the first page, the first question is, what does the digit five, what does dig, the digit five stand in each of these numbers? So if you look at the first one, if you say the number all together, it says 5,443. That means the five is, what does it stand for? Does it stand for 500 or 5,000? It stands for 5,000. So what are we going to write? 5,000. Okay, let's look at the next one. The number is 7,650. Two. What is the five? It's 50. So it stands for 50. Okay. So let's go to our next one. Now the next one, I know we haven't done fractions in a bit, but that's okay. So it says write the missing numerators and denominators. Now remember, numerators are top numbers and denominators are bottom numbers. Okay. So our top denominator for the first one is 6, okay? So it would be 2 over 3 and 6 over 9, okay? That is our first uh, numerator. Let's go to the second one. It says 6 over 10 and we have 3 over blank something. So our bottom number or our denominator is five, okay? So for B, it's five. Remember denominator, numerator. Numerator is the top number. Denominator is the bottom number, okay? Let's look at the last one. It says blank over six equals 10 over 12. So, our last one, our numerator, would be 5, okay? So we were making, these were making equal in fractions, if you remember. I know it's been a bit of time, so I'm not, uh, when we come back in September, we'll do another review. But I know right now it's been a while, so, but I want you to remember for now, numerator is the top number, denominator is the bottom number. Now let's look at our next question. It says write the fraction in its simplest form. Now I know that we haven't done these in a while, but do you remember one time when we used to say whatever we do to the bottom number, we do to the top number, and we can only use one times table, not one times one, but a times table, and that has to go for both the bottom denominator and the numerator. So ask yourselves, which times table has both 8 and 10 in it? Which times table has both 8 and 10 in it? So the times table that has both 8 and 10 in it is 2 times table, right? 2 times what gives us 8? So 2 times 4 gives us 8. And 2 times what gives us 10? 2 times 5 gives us 10. So my top number would be 4 and my bottom number would be 5. Which times table did we use? 2 times table. So how do we simplify? Simplify basically means breaking down the fraction so that you cannot use any more times table. So are there any times tables that have both 4 and 5 in it? No, we would have to use two times, so we would have to use four and five. But is that the rule? That would be a wrong rule because we don't do that. Let's go to nine and 12. Which times table has both nine and 12 in it? We always start with the smallest. One will always take it, so we don't count one times table. Let's go to two times table. Two times table doesn't have, it has 12 in it, but it doesn't have nine in it. We cannot use that. Let's go to three times table. Three times table has both nine and 12. So let's go three times what gives me nine? Three times three gives me nine. 
and 3 times 4 gives me 12. So my fraction would be 3 over 12. Now ask yourself, can you break this any more? Is there a times table that has both 3 and 12 in it? Absolutely. 3 times table. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, oops. No, no, no. I made a mistake. 3 over 4 is the answer. 3 over 4 because um, 3 times... Where are we? 3 times 3 gave us 9. 3 times 4 gave us 12. So we cannot break this anymore. The answer is 3 over 4. Let's go to our last one. It is 6 over 12. Now, 6 over 12 is, we can do two things. We can either use 2 times table, but then we'll have to break it more. Or ask yourself, does 6 times tables have 12 in it? And it absolutely does. So, we don't need to search anymore because we do know we can use 6 times table. So, 6 times 1 gives us 6 and 6 times 2 gives us 12. So my fraction is 1 over 2 for this one. Okay, let's go to our next question. Write the fractions in order beginning with the smallest. Now do you remember sometimes we think that the bigger fraction is the big, uh, sorry, the bigger number would have the bigger fraction. Is that always true? No, it's not, right? So let's look at 5 over 6, 2 over 6, and 3 over 6. We have the same denominators. When we have the same denominators, what do we look at? Well, we look at our numerators, right? We look at, so right now we are going to look at 5, 2, and 3. Which one is the smallest? 2 is the smallest. So our first fraction would be 2 over 6. Our second fraction would be 3 over 6, and our last one would be 5 over 6. Okay, let's go to the next one. So next one it is, so let's read this one. Okay, so we have 4 over 9, 2 over 3, and 7 over 9. So which one would be the smallest fraction? Well, the smallest fraction is 4 over 9 because... It would take a lot, so 4 is my numerator, right? How many, how many more numbers do I need to make this a whole? What do we need to add to 4 to make it a 9? So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I would need 5 more parts to make it whole, right? Let's go to, so I know that I need 5 parts. Four, um, five, four, over five, 4 over 9. Let's go to 2 over 3. How many parts do I need to make this whole? I would need one part. Let's go to 7 over 9. How many parts? I would need two parts. So that means my smallest fraction is 4 over 9 because I would need more parts to make it even or make it whole again. So therefore, this is the smallest part because I need a lot of it. So 4 over 9 is my smallest. Then I have 2 over 3. And then I have 7 over 9. Let's move to our last one. We have 3 over 8. We have 3 over 4. And we have 1 over 2. So my smallest would be 3 over 8 because just like this question, 3 over 8 would need a lot more parts to make it even to 8. Therefore, this is the smallest. The second smallest is 1 over 2 because it's half of something. And then the last one, so the biggest would be 3 over 4. Okay, so that is our fraction problem. Let's go to our last question. It says fill in the blanks. So we know 
that one tri each triangle stands for five people. That means you should have five. So I'm going to write five, 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 and five. So on top of each triangle, go ahead and write five. Because we know each of these triangles, they mean there are five people. Now they're asking, the question is, how many people are there? So if it's if each triangle is five people, how many people are there? How many triangles are there? Let's count our triangles. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six triangles. Each represents five people. What do we need to do? We are going to multiply our triangle to the number of people it represents. So that is six times or five times six. And it gives us 30. So there are 30 people all together. Okay? Because we do we multiplied our number of people and our number of triangles. So five times six gave us 30. Let's go to our last question. If e if squares one, two, three, four, four squares stand for 40 books. Each square stands for how many books? Now they've given us squares. They've said these four squares, they represent 40 books. They want to know what would each square represent. In the first problem, we had to go from small to big because they were like, well, there are five triangles. Each triangle is five people. How many people are there? So we went from one triangle and five people to 30, right? The idea was they wanted us to find out more. Here, they have given us 40 squares. So they're saying, sorry, four squares, and they're saying they represent 40 books. They're asking, what does one square represent? So we need to bring it closer and smaller, right? We need to come back. We need to, uh, we need to not make it bigger, but make it smaller. So when we are trying to make something smaller, we do the opposite of multiplying, we divide, right? So let's do how many squares are there? There are four squares. And each square, so all of them represent 40 books. So we would divide four and 40. Go to your four times table. How many fours are going to give you 40? If you did it correctly, you will see that if you have 10 fours, they should give you 40 because four times 10 gives us 40. So the answer for the last problem is 10. So each square represents 10 books. Okay, so that is our lesson for Thursday and I will see you next week. Good luck.